Ah, uh, the art of being unbothered. That beautiful mastery of overcoming anxiety and living without a care in the world about what others think. Just look at how unbothered I look while awkwardly taking my own photos because I was a solo female traveler. Anyways, this is starting to sound a little bit too much like the art of being alone and not the art of being unbothered, so let's move on. Hello, this channel is A Box of Chocolates and I am Brittany Edwards, but on the streets they call me Unbothered Brit. Okay, I'm the only one that calls me that, but I do have an infamous reputation for being unbothered. So this video is sponsored or brought to you today by Brandon continuously saying, I wish I could stop caring. And I imagine many of you can relate. So I'm gonna share with you what I shared with him and reveal the secret to how I remain unbothered and stop caring and start living my best life. Which is great because this channel is a lot about me sharing my authentic self with you anyways. Okay, first and foremost, you don't want to stop caring. As Brene Brown so eloquently put it in her TED Talk on vulnerability, You cannot selectively numb emotion. You can't say, here's the bad stuff. Here's vulnerability, here's grief, here's shame, here's fear, here's disappointment. I don't want to feel these. I'm going to have a couple of beers and a banana nut muffin. <laughs> I don't want to feel these. And I know that's, no, I know that's knowing laughter. I, I hack into your lives for a living. I know that's, <laughs> God. Um, you can't numb those hard feelings without numbing the other affects or emotions. You cannot selectively numb. So when we numb those, we numb joy. We numb gratitude. We numb happiness. And then we are miserable and we are looking for purpose and meaning. And then we feel vulnerable. So then we have a couple of beers and a banana nut muffin. You can't selectively numb your emotions. So caring is good. You want to care. If you stop caring in these situations that make you feel vulnerable or make you feel uncomfortable, what you're effectively doing is you're going to stop caring about everything. And that just sounds like a slippery slope to depression. We'll talk about depression another time. Anyways, what you want is not to stop caring, but to be someone who is comfortable navigating vulnerability and confident in who you are. That's it. I highly encourage you to watch the rest of the video from where that titillating clip came from because Brene Brown is literally like, she's amazing. She's so good. Absolutely incredible. Side note, really quickly. Um, one time somebody actually said that I reminded them of Brene Brown and I was just so like oh, because Brene Brown is like if you know who Brene Brown is and for me to be correlated and I reminded somebody of her like that was just so incredibly warm so I actually have this note on my phone that I keep really poetic or meaningful things that people tell me and so what she said was <coughs> three Two, one. So she said, I have been listening to Brene Brown talk about courage. And her talk reminded me of you. You are a woman of courage and you are an inspiration for others. Okay, back to the what we came here for. Now that that's out of the way, let me share with you some things to keep in mind. <coughs> There's actually nothing written down, but it looks nice. <coughs> The world does not revolve around you. You have to stop thinking you're at the center of how someone responds to you. People interact with you based on their past experiences, their childhood traumas, and unresolved emotional buildup. So let me paint a little scene for you. I have this thing, true story, where whenever I see, to well not all the time, but like a lot of the times, or some of the times, anyways, sometimes when I see feet, it looks like they have more than six toes on them. Like it, it legitimately looks like, 
like I just look at it and I'm like that can't be five that has to be more so I count them even my own toes sometimes I know it's weird don't judge you know live laugh love everyone peace so let's use that in this example So say I actually tell a person, hey, I honestly thought you had six toes for a second, ha ha ha. Little do I know, this person has been told their toes look like Vienna sausages all the time since growing up, and they hate any type of toe attention. So they absolutely blow up on me. That response has nothing to do with me and everything to do with their unresolved, built up resentment towards their family, friends, whoever, the milkman. And that leads me to my next point, which is you are not responsible for policing other people's emotions. My brother said this to me in passing a couple of years ago and it's just always stuck with me. I feel like it was a big turning point in my self glow up or something. <laughs> okay, so anyways, he said, no one has the power to make you mad. You allow yourself to get mad or whatever other emotion you want to put in there. People have the power to choose how they react. So, if we go back to the toe situation, the potentially six-toed person could stop and think, wow, this person has no idea that I've been called Vienna Sausage Susie since the age of three, and it struck a slight nerve, but I can laugh about it now. This is probably a really good time to mention one of my other favorite quotes. One of the most healing things you can do is recognize where in your life you are your own poison. The only responsibility that we have is to make sure that we're interacting with people in a way that comes from a place of kindness and non-judgment. Because this clearly doesn't work if you're saying universally problematic things. The fact is, is that people are going to interact with you based on their unresolved traumas and their current emotional state, which 9 times out of 10, maybe even 9.5 times out of 10, has nothing to do with you. Okay, I know that might be hard for the Leos, but stay with me. You're not the sun, you're not the center of the universe. When you realize you're not the reason why someone reacts to you in a particular way, and you have no control or responsibility over the way they do react to you, and you are confident in who you are, you're gonna start living in a whole new world. Okay, another major key alert. You need to know who you are, okay? You need to know who you are because when you know who you are and you're confident in who you are, you'll feel a lot more comfortable in, you know, a lot of situations. You need to be so confident in who you are that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks because what someone else thinks doesn't affect your truth. It doesn't stop your truth from existing, you know what I mean? So let's bring this back to the toes. I know that I'm a considerate and kind human being, so even if that person thinks I'm a lousy sausage, toast, Susie, Vienna, Colin, bully, that doesn't change my truth. But in order to be so confident in your truth, you need to know what your truth is so that other people's thoughts doesn't change who you know you are. Yeah. Because if you don't know yourself, then you'll lose yourself in what everyone else thinks of you. You need to know who you are because you need to be confident in who you are. Because I know who I am and I'm confident that I know that a lot of other people and I all know that I am considerate and kind and I didn't mean anything. I just, I have this thing with toes and I think they're six. So you need to be so confident in your truth and who you are that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks because what they think doesn't change who you are and you're not responsible for what other people think of you or policing their emotions again when you realize you're not the reason why someone reacts to you in a particular way and you're not responsible for other people's emotions and you are confident in who you are that is when you will successfully stop caring and start living your best life.